Hello YouTube, Candice Moll here with some Australian accent tips for you today. I recently have been going down a different avenue with some Australian slang videos that are a bit of fun, but today we're going to take it back to basics with some good old fashioned letter combinations. <laughs> So I've got some letter combos for you that you might have seen whether you've been reading or just trying to practice your Australian dialect and you're wondering how an Australian might pronounce these combinations. Before we get started though, have you subscribed to this channel? If you're interested in the Australian accent or dialect or you want to visit Australia, go ahead and click the subscribe button and if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. That really helps me to know what you guys are interested in so that I'm putting out the right kind of videos for you. So, letter combos. The first letter combination I'm gonna start with is the OL combo. Now, if you haven't already watched my short vowel sound video, now would be a good time to do that. I'll put the link in the top corner of the screen right now. Go ahead and watch that one and really focus on the O oh sound. So I'm gonna continue with the assumption that you've already looked at the short vowel sound video. So the OL combination really uses that short O. Oh. But of course, the L closes off the sound and it really changes it as it comes out of your mouth. So if you listen, I can say O, oh, but as soon as I put that L, it turns into O. Oh. Oh, so what I'm doing is I'm using my lips. A lot of people don't realize that in other English dialects, like US standard, for example, the lips aren't used as predominantly as they are in Australian English. So what I'm doing is I'm using my lips <laughs> to, to help close off that sound. So the O oh is an open mouth, O, oh, and then I'm closing my mouth with my tongue. Ooh. So the tongue is placed behind my teeth in the same position as it would for a T. It's on that little ridge that's behind your teeth, not touching the back of your teeth. Okay? Oh, oh, old. The tip of my tongue is resting on that little ridge behind my teeth. Okay? As I'm closing my mouth, my lips are finishing the sound. Ol, oh, ol, oh, ol. Oh. So it's like, rather than a long O, oh, that was exaggerated, rather than a long O oh sound or a short O oh sound, the sound changes to more of a O, oh, O. Oh. That's how it sounds without using my tongue for the O oh sound. Oh, that's all lips. Okay. The first word is cola. Cola. This is a good one to practice on because you really need that L to finish the la. Cola. The next one, cold. Co -d. Cold. Soldier. Sold. We don't say soldier, um, even though it's spelled that way. It's a j. It's, quite, it's almost like there's a j, j a, soldier. And the last example is goal or goalie. Goalie. Goal. Okay? O L. It's a bit of a tricky one. Next we have the O W combination. Ow. Ow. This is definitely a diphthong. So just like the other long vowel sounds, we use a lot of the short vowel sounds <laughs> to create this long sound. It's not easy. It's very tricky. So take it slowly and be kind to yourself because it's hard. So the short sounds that are used together to create this long sound are a, a, o, and all short sounds. 
So again for this one, watching the short vowel sound video is important so that you have all of these bass sounds to create this long vowel sound, okay? So try that a few times and then when you're ready, slide them together. A, A, O, U. Ow, ow, ow. And that's the sound. Ow, a, a, o, u. Okay? So, some words for you to practice. Ouch. That's what you say when you hurt yourself. Ouch. A, a, o, u. Ch. Ouch. Ouch. Couch. Mouth, 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 found, bouncy. You might have a bouncy personality. <laughs> They're always fun. Grounded, grounded. If this is too fast for you, pause it, take it back and really practice slowing it down and hitting each of those individual sounds, okay? It'll really help. Cow, down. And then the last one is tricky because there's an R on the end, R on the end, <laughs> just to be clear. The Australian R messes everything up. This is a single syllable word, but because there's an R on the end, we don't pronounce the R, but we might add in a wa for emphasis. For example, hour. The hour is three o'clock. Or that's hours. That car is hours. Car is. <laughs> Just to be confusing. Okay? The ER combo. This one is a really tricky one for people to get. And the reason is because. <sighs> With the Australian dialect, we don't pronounce that R. Uh. So in words like church, for example, with an American dialect, or even Scottish or lots of different types of British accents, the R uh is really the primary focus of these words. So it would be chur, church, church, right? We don't say the R. Uh. So the sound is more of a nothing sound. But if you imagine you're a French person thinking and you make that sound, it's like, uh. So it's so important to use your lips with this sound, okay? Your lips come right out. Push your lips out, open your mouth just a little bit, and the sound is kind of forward in your mouth. So rather than the sound sitting at the back of your mouth, like in an ah type of sound, this is all forward, uh, uh. And the tip of my tongue is almost resting just on top of your teeth, depending on the structure of your mouth, or just behind, just behind your bottom teeth, okay? So just practice the sound. Imagine you're a French person thinking, the stereotype, and go, uh. The tip of your tongue rests right here, and it's like the back of my tongue is lifting up to push that sound forward. Uh. So let's practice with a simple one. Her. Her. So my tongue is sitting just behind my teeth, almost resting on top right there. My lips come right out and the sound is forward. Her. Jerk. Nerdy. Nerdy. So with this one, of course, the N requires my tongue to start up here on the ridge behind my top teeth. N, N. And then it drops right down to behind my bottom teeth to create the little tunnel for that sound to come through. Remember your lips. Nerdy. Earn. Uh, earn. Church, of course, is another one. Church, church. Turkey, urban, especially with words like urban or urn, where there's no consonant in the beginning. You really got to use your lips. 
Worm is another one. Work. And last one, word. All the ER sound. Good. Okay, the or sound I have looked at in a previous video, but I'm gonna briefly touch on it again because I think it's a really, really difficult one for a lot of people to grasp. So I'll try a new way of explaining it and see if this helps. Or, so it's like you are making a well in here. Imagine you're trying to hold water in your mouth right in here. So your jaw drops down and your tongue pulls back to make space in here, or. So the tip of my tongue actually pulls back into my mouth when I'm making this sound. So if you're making the sound correctly, you should be able to do it with water in your mouth. Or, or, or. <coughs> Maybe don't use too much water. Okay, or, or, pull your tongue out of the way, drop your chin down, make a really small circle with your lips, or, all right? So, the AW combo is in words like sore, awful, awful, prawn. We actually don't call them shrimp in Australia. I think that shrimp are cousins to prawns. A lot of people say they're the same thing. I'm not an expert on seafood or marine life, <laughs> shellfish, but in Australia we have prawns. Fun fact, the reason, have I spoken about this before? Maybe I have, but apparently the reason that a lot of people think that Australians will say, I'll throw another shrimp on the barbie is because of the tourism commercial that Paul Hogan was in, actor Paul Hogan. He was in a commercial that was aimed at the US market. Come and say good day. I'll slip an extra shrimp on the barbie for you. So they were trying to encourage US Americans to go and visit Australia. And he actually in the ad said, I'll throw another prawn on the barbie for you. But the director said, can you please say shrimp? Because the American audience won't know what a prawn is. And that is how I'll throw another shrimp on the barbie became a thing. <laughs> Such a shame, because it's not remotely accurate. What are you gonna do? <laughs> we just don't call them shrimp. Order, that O-R creates the or sound. Order, board. Laura, good name, Laura, audio, and poor. There are three pores in English that are pronounced the same way with different spellings and different meanings. But in Australian English, there's actually four because the A-W creates the same sound as the O-R, poor. So we also include a puppy paw. <laughs> a really good practice for, for these sounds is the sentence walk to work. War, A-W, and were, E-R. Walk to work. It's a bit tricky. So try saying that. Walk, war, chin comes down, tongue pulls back to create the well in here. Walk to work. Tip of your tongue is against the back of your teeth and then the middle of the tongue kind of lifts up just a bit to push that sound forward. Walk to work. Okay? Good practice for you. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you like this video, do give it a thumbs up so that I know that this is the type of content you wanna see. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and click the little subscribe button. It helps me out, it helps you out because you know when new videos are coming out and keep on practicing. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Hey guys, 
Before you go, you need to check out my other YouTube channel. It's called G'day Let's Play and it's made specifically for kids. So if you have preschoolers in the house, click on over to G'day Let's Play, plop them in front of it and it might result in them speaking with an Australian accent. Or if English is your second language, or you just want a new and fun way to practice your Australian dialect, watching kids programming is a really, really good way to practice. Also, it would help me out if you clicked subscribe on the G'day Let's Play YouTube channel, because I really need some more subscribers, okay?